Brief light request is a very important concept to understand and this concept relates so much with browsers and cores. In this video, I'll be showing you some examples of brief lighted requests so you can see what they are and I'll also help you understand why the browser does this or how it is relevant to cores. Now, if you already know what brief lighted requests are, you can jump ahead to the time code currently on the screen because that's where I begin the explanation. But first, let's start by understanding what brief lighted requests are. And this is the application that I used in the previous video. If you haven't seen the previous video yet, you should check it out because that is where I start with the fundamental idea of calls. So in the previous video, we established that a browser sends requests to the backend. Like we have this script here where we are sending a request to localhost 3000. And on the server here, we have an API for post. Now on sending this response back to the browser, before the browser would process the response gotten in this our den block, the browser would read the course rules coming from the server. And on the server, the course rules we set here are origin of localhost 5500, methods get post put, credentials of true. You can see the origin is 5500. If we should refresh, you see we get the response working fine. And down here, we can see that the server actually processes the requests. So we have post request to slash API. We log the cookies and we also log the origin. So if we go to the network tab here, this is the API. When the browser does this request, the browser sees from the server that the server allows credentials from cross origins and the server also allows the control origin of localhost 5500. So the browser can enforce these rules and then it sees that this communication between these different cross origins is fine. Now, if we should go to the server and then we update our course configuration to say, I only accept an origin of 5501. If we should refresh now, you can see that the post request still goes to the server. So we still have post request to slash API. We have the cookies and we have the headers. But if you come here, you can see that the API now fails. And if we should come to the console, we can see why the API fails. And it fails because the access control allow origin header has a value of localhost 5501, but then our origin is 5500. So what we established from the previous video is that any request that gets to the server, the server would still process the request, but then the cost policy only stops the browser from processing the response, basically reading the response. So the browser doesn't stop the request from going, the browser only stops you from reading the response. But then there are certain cases where the browser would not send the request directly to the server. Instead, it will first verify from the server that can I send this request? And if the server says yes, then the browser can send that request. And I can show you an example here if I should use put. So now I'm using put and then here we have an API for put. So what we should have is console log put request to API. Now if I should come here and I should refresh, what you notice on the server is that we don't have the put API triggered, which means the put request never got to the server. If I should change this back to post, what you notice here is that the, the server gets the post request and it processes it, but then we have our course error, which doesn't allow us to read the response. But if I put this on put and I refresh, the put request never gets to the server. So in this case, the browser doesn't send the put request immediately. But then if we should come to the network tab, all we see here is that we have this request, which is called a pre-flight. And then this is the actual request that failed. Now, why is this the case? Now, this is where the concept of simple requests and pre-flighted requests comes in when working with cross-origin communication. And this is the MDN docs here where we can see what classifies as a simple request. Just take note of this line for now. We'll come back to this in a second when we explain why pre-flighted requests actually happen. I'll also make a separate video where I talk about this error cross-site request forgery because this is an error you want to take note of when working on backend applications especially. Now, it says a simple request is one that meets all of the following conditions. Either one of the allowed methods gets head a post. So if you are using get, for example, this is a simple request and the browser sends the simple request directly. If you are using head, it's the same thing. If you are using post, as we already saw, it's the same thing. Another condition is that apart from the headers automatically set, the only headers which are allowed to be manually set are this. So if you are setting these headers in your request, your request is to classify the simple request. Although there are exceptions when it comes to the content type. If the content type is this or this, or this, it is still classified a simple request. If it is something else like application JSON, that is no longer going to be a simple request. So if I should come here now and then for my headers, 
I change the content type to be application slash JSON. Now this is no longer a simple request. So if I should come back here, even though we are still using get, close my server and start it again. If I should refresh, you can see that the get request never gets to the server and we have our cost policy here. And then if we should go again back to the network tab, you can see we have this pre-flight here so because we are changing the content type to one of the content types that doesn't classify as a simple request this now becomes a pre-flighted request where we have this pre-flighted request before the actual request which doesn't get sent and then there are also rules like this and rules like this so the difference between a simple request and a pre-flighted request is that a simple request goes directly to the server if i should change this content type to text slash plane you can see that it actually gets to the server you can see here we don't have any pre-flights but in the case of a pre-flighted request if i should change this back to application slash json and what happens in a pre-flighted request is that the browser is not going to send this request directly so what this browser first does is that it sends a request to the server and this request has a request method of options and then on getting to the server the server can configure the course rules and send that back as a response to the client now the client can now see that access control allow credentials is true okay access control allow headers of content type and access control allow methods these are the methods allowed then the browser now sees access control allow origin is localhost 5501 Again, our origin is 5500 and because this origin doesn't match the expected origin on the server, the browser then knows that the server does not expect our request. So you can see here, we do not have any response. The request fails in our console. We have the access controller origin has a value of this that is not equal to the supplied origin. So this would be the same thing if we should use put here, even if we leave this as text slash plain. So coming back here, if you have a simple request, it goes directly to the server. The server processes it and then sends course information to the browser, which the browser enforces. But then when you have a pre-flighted request, as we just saw, it says unlike simple requests, for pre-flighted requests, the browser first sends an HTTP request using the options method to the resource on the other origin in order to determine if the actual request is safe to send. Such cross-origin requests are pre-flighted since they may have implications for user data. So one of the reasons why the browser does pre-flighted requests is, for example, if you have this put method, which might change a user's email address or password, or let's say you have a delete method, which can delete a user's data. If somebody should set up a fake website, which looks like your own website, on that fake website, that person can call this method delete. And even if on your server, you already expect a delete method, the browser doesn't know what what the allowed origin is yet right but then if that person on your fake website should click a button or do anything and then the browser sends the delete request to the server then the server deletes the person's data and then the server responds with this before the browser sees that the origin here doesn't match now that would not be good for the user's data and that is why in the case of a pre-flighted request before the server sends the actual delete request it will first send a request with the method of options it will get these course rules and then from these course rules it would know whether this is an allowed origin and if it is not an allowed origin then it doesn't send the original request but now if i should change this back to 5500 now everything is successful on the server we have this delete request to api and the browser actually gets a response and it can read that response if we go back to the network tab you can see the pre-flights that we have here again it sends the options from these options it gets all of this course information and then when it sees that all of the course information matches the request that we are sending then the browser knows that it can now send the actual request which has a method of delete so now you're thinking why exactly does the browser send a pre-flight request? Or why does it send a pre-flight request for put, for delete, but it doesn't send a pre-flight request for get and for post? Like what exactly makes get and post a simple request and these ones are not simple requests? Well, to understand this, this is what we need to remember again, the concept of same origin policy. Before course existed, all the browser had was the same origin policy and the same origin policy allows for script communication between one origin and another origin if 
both origins are the same. But even at that, you could also use your forms. For example, you could have a form that points to a different origin like this. For example, we can have a method of get. And on this form, your action can be a different origin than the origin that the website is loaded on. So if I should come here now and click this submit button, you can see that everything works fine. The get request is actually sent to the server. This is from the form. And on this form, you can also put a post. And if I should come here and submit this button again, you can see we have post request to API. And this is why the MDN docs says that the motivation is that the form elements which predates cross-site fetch and this can submit simple requests to any origin. So which means that if you are building your server and you are following the same origin policy, so you don't even set up all this course, it means that you already need to expect that this get request can come from a form on a cross origin and also on your post api you need to already expect that this can come why am i spelling like this come that this can come from a form on a cross origin so even before course existed when working on your backend application you still need to ensure that when it comes to get request and post request you are handling them from the right origin but a form cannot send a put so if we should come back here now, we should click this submit button. You see that it defaults back to get. So if you put a method that the form does not expect, then it's going to default back to get. So forms can only send get and post and they can send this to any origin. But then where does the same origin policy come in? Well, the same origin policy comes in in the fact that if you are now using a script and you are using get the browser is still going to send the requests so if i should refresh here you can see the browser is still going to send that get request the same origin policy does not stop the browser from sending a get request the same origin policy remember again we are not setting any calls here so the same origin policy would only stop the browser from reading the response and the same thing happens with posts so the same origin policy allows you to only assess resources from an origin if the origins are the same if it is a cross origin the browser will not be able to assess such resources even if the browser actually sends the request but then if i should have the same origin here this is the website hosted on localhost 3000 you can see that if I should refresh, the request actually gets sent to the server and we can process the response. And this is actually useful. For example, if you have a website like example.com, a fraud decides to create fake example.com, which looks exactly like your website. You would be able to send a request to the server and you'll be able to read responses or access resources from that server. But then this person fake example.com, even though the person is actually able to send a get or push request to this server, the person will be unable to read the response which means the person is unable to assess the resources from this server since they are different origins so the idea of same origin policy is so that another website cannot assess the resources of a different origin but that is not all the same origin policy does the same origin policy also prevents you from sending put or delete or other request methods for get and for post the same origin policy will allow you to send it fine because you can already send it from a form right but then when it comes to put and delete the same origin policy would not allow you to send this in the first place it would block it from going so now if i should refresh you can see that the same origin policy does not allow us to send that delete request to the server so what this means is that anybody building their server if they are building it with the idea of same origin policy they already know if they are following the same origin policy that they do not expect this request from a cross origin because the browser is not going to allow it so now if we come back to this mdn docs the difference between a simple request and a pre-flighted request and this is also where you get to understand why pre-flighted requests are relevant to course simple requests could already happen before course 
existed. So before course existed, still in the idea of same origin policy, you could already send a GET request and a POST request. The reason why HEAD is here is because HEAD is actually similar to GET. The only difference is that I think with HEAD, you don't get a you don't expect the response. So head is still similar to get. So even before course came in, you could already do a get and a post. Also before course, you already had some headers which were already set for you. And also before course, you already had these content types already sent, especially when you are working with forms. But then with the introduction of course, which allows for cross origin, you can now use other methods like put and delete when you are working with cross origin but because this was not possible with the same origin policy this is why the browser has to first send a pre-flighted request to first check if the server expects this kind of cross origin so if you don't understand that let me give you an example when people are building their servers on same origin policy these are some of the expectations that they would have they would expect that get and post can come from any origin so in that sense the backend developer still has to ensure that they are handling the correct origins when they are working with get and post also the developers would expect that put delete and other request methods cannot come from cross origins they cannot come from forms and also the same origin policy would not allow such request methods to go from scripts another expectation these developers would have is that the content type of the request coming from these cross origins cannot be application json now if they are developing their backend with these expectations like I already said, it means that the developer would not expect that a delete request should come from a cross origin. And this is where a pre-flight becomes important because, again, if you remember, with post, the browser actually sends the request, but it prevents us from reading the response. But then imagine that the browser actually sends a delete request and then on the server, some data is deleted, some response is sent, and then when that information gets to the browser, the browser now realizes that that origin wasn't expected in the first place. Now this would be bad for the user. And in this case, you might blame the developer that why the developer just make that assumption. But then when you're working with same origin policy, it is safe to make that assumption because same origin policy would have prevented this API call from being sent in the first place place so this is why a pre-flighted request is important if you are working with simple request it is already expected on the server that you're already handling simple requests in the most secured way but then when it comes to non-simple requests like our delete method then in that case the browser instead of sending this request directly to the server first the browser has to first send a pre-flight request and because there is no allowed origin, the browser now knows that this server does not expect this kind of request. And this is why the pre-flight is important. And this is also how it relates to cause. You can think of them as a safety or security measure. And you can also think of them as a compatibility thing. But then if we should set on our server that we actually allow requests coming from localhost 5500, now, if I should refresh, the pre-flight goes, gets the information from the server. The browser now knows that, okay, the server actually expects this kind of cross-origin request. And then the actual API is now sent with our delete request. This gets to the server, delete request to API. And of course, the response comes successfully. And then we have the response here. So I hope that this helps you understand what pre-flight requests are. And it also helps you understand the importance of pre-flight requests when working with course. I'll still be making more videos explaining different things in course and the different misconceptions around course. And of course, if you have any questions around course, let me know in the comments and I would also try to make a video on that. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with others. Also subscribe for more videos like this.